Hello, my name is Xiao Chen. I'm an associate professor at the Technical University of Denmark. I have been working on composite wind turbine blade structure for more than 10 years. Today, I will give you a lecture on blade testing and modeling. After this lecture, you will be able to explain purpose and the different types of blade testing, explain common measurements and inspection techniques. You should also be able to describe structure nonlinearities and failure modes. Lastly, you can also explain challenges and potential solutions of testing future large blades. The purpose of blade testing is to understand structure response of wind turbine blades under specific applied loads. By using blade testing, you can validate design assumptions made in the structure design phase. You can also identify relevant failure modes and verify structure strengths. You can also develop new models that can predict complex structure response under applied loads. Typically, there are four types of blade testing. The first type is uh, the test to determine mass and center of gravity. And the second type is structure dynamics testing, in which the structure natural frequencies and damping ratios can be determined. Those two types of the tests will give first an indication of whether the blade is manufactured according to the design. Here we also have two types of tests that is using loads. The first one is the static loading, and the second one is the fatigue loading. Static loading includes the structure collapse test, and fatigue loading is to evaluate the structure design lifetime performance under cyclic loads. In this lecture, I will briefly introduce static loading and fatigue loading. In the static loading test, the bending moment are usually applied cross statically to the blade by pulling the blade around. During the test, the blade deflection and strength are measured and compared with the design value, which are usually calculated from finite element simulation. As you can see in this, this figure, the test results and FEE simulation results match quite well. During the test, structure damage and pos possible failure are inspected so that uh, design evaluation can be done afterwards. On the other hand, fatigue loading test is typically conducted by applying cyclic loads in flapwise, edgewise direction or in combination, typically using resonance excitation, which means that the blade is excited at the lateral frequencies. The test loads are normally scaled up from the design loads to reduce the test time. This is particularly important for the large blades, where the lateral frequency is very low. The blades are also inspected at different test intervals to check the damage and the failure propagation. Here shows a video of some fatigue test of the full scale blades conducted at D2 large scale facility. As you can see here, the fatigue loads are applied by exciters. So you can see that the load combination is applied to the blade, which is to mimic the realistic um, operational load condition in the field. It is also important to measure the structure response and inspect any damage that can occur during the test. Most common measurement techniques include using strain gauges, accelerometers, displacement sensors, load cells, etc. Depending on the purpose of the blade testing, other techniques can be also used, such as digital image correlation, infrared thermography, acoustic emission, ultrasound scanning, shareography, etc. In this lecture, we will talk about more on digital image correlation and infrared thermography. Digital image correlation is an optical method to measure full field 2D or 3D displacement or strains in the long contact manner. Here shows an example of a digital image correlation measurement conducted on a subcomponent test of a training edge cut from a large blade. Here you can see the speckle patterns are applied on the surface of this specimen. By tracking the individual movement of those speckle patterns, the strain or displacement can be measured 
in full field. Here shows an example of the measurement results. We can see that under the compressive load, the buckling driven failure phenomenon can be captured in full field in 3D. It gives a very good overview of how the blade uh, critical region is subject to buckling driven uh, failure. Infrared thermography is a method which uses a thermal camera to capture and create images of an object by using its emitted infrared irradiation, which are invisible to human eye. This is a particularly useful method to detect fatigue damage remotely without stopping the blade test. At DTU Wind Energy, we have developed an Aquara method, which can not only detect the damage, but also evaluate them in the real real time. Here shows a video of this uh, Aquata method. You can see the blade is under cyclic loading, and uh, here is a damage which is uh, progressing during the fatigue cycle. Using computer vision algorithm, we can isolate the blade from the irrelevant and noisy background, and by searching the damage automatically and uh, evaluate them pixel by pixel, we can evaluate the damage progress in near real time. In addition to structure testing, damage modeling is also very important for designing reliable and lightweight wind turbine blade structures. In order to have a good damage model, we need to understand different uh, learning structure linearities. Here, usually we have three types of structure linearities. The first one is the mature linearities, which includes nonlinear stress strain relation and also different types of material failures, such as failure of composites and laminates, sandwich cores, and adhesive materials. The second type is the geometric nonlinearities, which include local buckling, the brother effect, and large deformation. The last type of structured nonlinearities is status nonlinearities, which includes the change of a contact condition and load directions. In order to predict very complex structural damage behavior, we need to have a nonlinear finite element analysis to do that. Here shows an example of a buckling driven progressive failure of the training edge region in a large blaze. By incorporating different uh, structural nonlinearities in the model, we are able to predict the entire progressive failure procedure of this training edge segment. As shown in this video, you can see that uh, local deformation is predicted, and also the mature failure contact uh, information is also included in this model in order to predict the very complex structural damage. Regarding testing future large blades, we know that uh, blades are become larger and the challenge of testing them become more significant. This is due to the fact that uh, physical test capability is limited. Also, they require long test time due to lower large frequencies when the blade become larger. There might be also another challenge that a hidden or new failure mechanism can occur where the blade is scaled up to the size that we have never experienced before. There are some potential solutions and future leads for these uh, challenges. We may test only part of the blades by using, for example, blade segmentation or subcomponent test. We can also combine physical and virtual testing so that they can complement each other to get an overview of what's going on with the blade. We also need a high performance numerical model that are not only focus on the modeling accuracy, but also efficiency. To summarize this lecture, you have learned the purpose and different types of blade testing, the common measurements and inspection techniques, different structural linearities and failure modes. You have also learned some challenges and potential solutions of testing future large blades. Thank you.